Commodity TV live from the Mines and Money London 2022 and we have now here a special guest out of the gold space I would call it. Uh, Katalin Kiloflisky, the CEO of, oh sorry, Canna Gold Resources. How are you Katalin? Good, very good and uh, happy to provide an update on uh, the new Canna Golds. The new Canna Gold. How is the show so far? It's been great actually, you know, I'm happy to see lots of uh, excitement starting to brew. You know, I'm seeing some of the optimism starting to twinkle. Uh, you know, it's not there yet, but I'm seeing some some signs of hope here. Yeah, okay, so you are working in British Columbia to bring a um, an old, I think, an old um, gold mine, high grade gold mine, back into production. Yeah. So can you give us an insight in this project? Sure. I mean, uh, before I do that, I think what I really want to give you an insight into it's what has changed with the company because fundamentally everything has changed with the company in the last few months you know the company has a, a long history it's been around for about 30 years uh, mainly advancing the new Polaris project uh, but literally in the last few months we have a brand new board of directors we have a new large shareholder which provided not only the capital to the company, but the financing commitment to advance the project that we have, which is one of the highest grade undeveloped gold project in the Western Canada, to a production decision, basically pro by completing bankable feasibility and mm -hmm. permitting. Mm -hmm. And they have provided a financing commitment for that. Mm -hmm. Right. So really, if you look at the company, uh, versus 30 years ago or maybe a few months ago it's a completely new entity from a board perspective management perspective strategical perspective and the ability to get things done which we never really had so i'm very excited about it uh, lots has happened with the company the last few months we've actually started the bank about feasibility study work it's ongoing right now we expect the feasibility study to be coming in the next 12 to 18 months the actual permitting of the mine will get started in Q1 of next year. So, you know, really excited about making that step. And more importantly, you know, we really start to engage firsthand with the First Nations group, which is the one group that we're dealing with. It's a fantastic group. It's called um, TRTFN. Um, it's a group that we maintain an excellent relationship with and it's one that we want to really partner with to bring the project forward to permitting and production decision. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a great time for the company. Um, you know, we are, I keep saying that we are somewhat privileged uh, because, you know, most of the junior companies, so actually all of them, uh, they live and die by the state of the market. Right, yeah. there is no revenues, as you know, in the junior space. So you really rely on the public markets to fund your efforts and your work. And you better be successful to get more money. And you better have a good market environment to be able to attract that capital. Well, we are a bit unique because regardless what the market do in the next two three years, we have this financing commitment, which already started to materialize. You know, we already have received money. We will get more money as we speak. So it's quite unique. You know, because it allows us to fundamentally change the company by doing the things we are set to do. Okay. So it's a high grade project. So what means high grade? And do you also already have a resource base? Yes. I think yes, because you need it for a feasibility study. Correct. So, you know, high grade, what we have high grade is over 10 grams gold, average resource, which is indeed a high grade resource. Uh, we have about a million ounces of gold, uh, which will almost likely be measured and indicated very soon because we've completed almost 40,000 meters of drilling since the last uh, updated resource was published a few years back. So we're really aiming and targeting about a million ounces measure indicated, which is the resource going to be used for the bankable feasibility study. And in terms of size of the project, you know, we are really targeting roughly 100,000 ounces of gold a year production for about 10 years, right? Okay. And given the high grade nature of the project, the economics of the mine based on the PEA numbers that were published a few years back are very robust. Yeah. And yes, despite the fact that prices went up globally now, so we expect you know, the capital cost to be higher and operating cost to be higher, um, the project sh sh should still be very economical. Why? Because it's a very high grade project. But more importantly, gold went up too. Right? So whatever really 
we go up in terms of cost, we're kind of offsetting for most part by the fact that gold went up as well in the last few years. So uh, it's very, it's a very good project. Um, it's one that we hope to be able to build for less than maybe two hundred million dollars. So it's it's an affordable capital cost while giving you a production profile that's you know about hundred thousand a year. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's great. Yeah. It's a very unique opportunity. Yeah, How does infrastructure lo look like? Infrastructure looks very bad, and very this is bad. one of the reasons why the project has been struggling. But again, we have the great afford to deal with that, right? So what I mean by very bad is there's no road access, right? So we would basically be looking to produce a physical uh, gold ore bar to fly it out. Uh -huh. So you have no cost in, in shipping the gold out, really, uh, when you look fundamentally. And also, you know, we are lucky enough to have a uh, seasonal barge access on the project, so that it's close to waterway, which is great news. Uh, so we expect to be able to bring all the bulk supplies and the construction equipment. Everything is required seasonally through the through the barge, right? To get the project one built, and then as it operates, to allow us in the you know a period of a few months to bring in all the fuel and all the big supplies required for running the mine year round. Now. The good thing about uh, the project again and the kind of counterbalance of the fact that we are remote, it's it's a small operation from a footprint perspective, right? Uh, we're only only targeting about a thousand ton a day, roughly, mm -hmm. which would employ in the range of about a hundred people. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's it's a very small operation, um, but being high grade allows us to produce lots of gold. Okay. So working on a feasibility study needs you need some money. So what's cash in the bank? So right now we are just call closing roughly about uh, almost eight million dollar financing, uh, which has been offered as a rights issue to all the existing shareholders. Again, you know our larger shareholder want it to be fair with everyone. Give every shareholder an opportunity to participate in the current financing, and they've also guaranteed the financing. So what it means is, you know, anybody that doesn't want to participate can participate. Uh, Sun Valley, which is our large shareholder, will participate and the company is guaranteed the funds. So these are the large shareholders. What does the shareholder structure look like and what's management holding? Yeah, so you know, the largest shareholder right now, Sun Valley, is roughly about 25%. They may go up up to 40 some percent after rights have been exercised. So they all are significant shareholders. And not only they are a significant shareholder, but a significant partner for the company. And why, what I mean by that, we actually have direct access to a big team of professionals that they have in their own mines in Colombia, to geologists, engineers, you know, so we have full access, literally almost no cost to the company for that. So not only we get their financial support, we also get their technical expertise and technical support. And one of the Sun Valley partners, Mike Doyle, who's an excellent both geologist and engineer, is part of our management team and now and the board. All right, so we get that. Outside Sun Valley, we do have some institutional ownership actually out of here in London. Raffer LLP is our lar probably largest institutional holding in the company. We have some high net worth investors. And then, um, you know, uh, management being brand new, it's just building up the position. You know, we don't really, I personally have yet to buy shares because I've just rejoined the company literally a few months back. So uh, we will be building positions. Same applied with the new board, they just being appointed in July. So they are going to the process of acquiring shares and why not. So um, it's, a, it's, it's for what the reason why that is a brand new company, more or less, right? So we're kind of starting over again, but fundamentally in a much stronger footing than ever before. So that sounds great to me. Yeah. So much work to do. Yeah. So all the best for you in 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having your time. Absolutely. So Thank ladies you. and gentlemen, that was okay. Katalin Kilofliski, the CEO of Canna Gold Resources. Yeah, you heard it. Much work to do, but feasibility study will come out in about 12 to 15 months from now. Um, yeah, and I would say check out the company, do your own research and bye bye from London. <laughs>